March 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. This meeting of the TAC is being conducted by a remote participation. Um, and so I, this meeting is now adjourned. I mean, begun and uh, <laughs> we're done. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> and, um, and the first order of business is um, announcements. Okay. So I had a quick announcement. Um, I believe at the council meeting on Monday with the new council that they agreed to keep all the committee meetings remote in, until April and that they would revisit it then. Uh, Guilford, Amber, mm -hmm. is that your understanding as well? And the council themselves are meeting in person, but oh, councilors definitely. are allowed to participate remotely and the public is not allowed to come in yeah. person unless they have like specific business or invited or something. So, um, so that was the main announcement. And I have something that's a totally like off the top of our committee, but um, I'd recently been looking into, so Joe Comerford um, had filed like right in, in the middle of December, she had filed a bill to strengthen the distracted driving laws after there was that cyclist who was killed near Northampton High School and the driver who hit the cyclist, his name was Cherry, Charlie Braun. She was, she was a distracted driver. She was doing FaceTime with a friend when she hit him. And she also, it was shocking to me that she was doing this, but she also had a toddler in the car at the time. Mm. So um, Joe has been trying to strengthen, she's trying to strengthen some of the laws and I've been in touch with her on that issue too. So, because I think it's hard for the laws to keep up with the technology. So yeah. even the current law we have, it says that, you know, you can, you can only do things hands-free, but then it sort of gives um, free reign to anything that's hands-free. But now like there's so much voice activated functions that, um, that I don't really think hands-free is sufficient, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can no longer play games in your Tesla. That's that's okay. But when I was looking into distracted driving crashes, it's really shocking to me, like how many, um, how many incidents have occurred where people are streaming TV shows or football games or whatever, and then they just run people over. And you would think that you would know not to play video games or stream football games while you're driving, but apparently not everybody realizes. So, okay. That, I mean, so that's just a quick thing. Um, and I don't know, I guess, so um, we do have an attendee. Can we let them in? I'm assuming it might be Eve, perhaps, or did we just let them in? No, it wasn't Eve and they left. Oh. So it might have okay. been, a, yeah. A phantom person. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I haven't found. heard from Holden recently. I'm hoping he didn't give up on us, um, but I will reach out to him again. <laughs> um, and I know the town manager had said he was gonna look for, um, he was going to do some recruitment for new members. I did. Um, I did email the town manager's office just asking what was going on, um, and I haven't heard anything back yet this week. So. Oh, so Amber, I just have a little housekeeping thing. I noticed on our website today, the TAC website, when I went to click on the latest agenda, because uh, I wasn't sure where my copy was, it came up with the public shade tree agenda. Oh. So All right, that's be, it would weird. be great if we could I'll, fix that link. <laughs> yeah, I'll fix that. <laughs> it's like, that's not our agenda. Okay, no biggie. And um, Amber, you didn't have new minutes for us, right? So that's no, fine, you were moving. No, yeah. no worries, no worries. Okay, um, great. So does anybody um, else have any other announcements? I have a concern, but I guess I'll bring it up at the end of the meeting. If we have time. You can, I don't know, if you can bring it up. Word it, it's fine. It's fine. Oh, okay. okay. Next is, um, uh, so, so we don't have any meeting minutes to approve or? That's what Amber said. No, okay. she okay. will send them to us next time because we were up to date until like we're just missing the last minute. So right. okay, that's Great. fine. Um, um, so the next agenda item are the um, TAC priorities. Right. So we had talked about that at the end of the meeting, and I was working on writing it up 
Um, I did get pretty busy, unfortunately. Um, so I, that's still in progress. But as I was writing it up, I, I did have a um, I did have a few questions I wanted to ask the group, and then I could finish writing it up. I mean, I part of what I the way I've been writing it up is just to have like kind of an overview of who the tech is and um, our vision statement and so on. Um, and it seems like a good time, you know, this is a good time for it just because you have the new council um, and the people. So my understanding from the council meeting on Monday is that the council members were asked to choose like their priorities for their council subcommittee assignments. And then they were going to be assigned by the end of this week and meetings were going to be set. So um, like we don't know yet who's going to be on the TSO, but I would assume that the TSO would meet either next week or maybe the following week. Um, so like, so I mean, so I would like to go forward to the council, you know, just with our write up of who we are and everything, mm -hmm. um, but I thought I would wait until that happens. Um, and there's also been some discussions about shrinking the council subcommittees from the five members to three members. So. And there's also been some discussion about the council trusting its committees more. Um, <clears throat> you know, so that, that the council, the formal subcommittees of the council aren't redoing the work that other committees have been doing. So exactly. this might be an opportune time. And the councilors really do need to reduce the amount of time they spend Oh, for meeting. sure. Yeah. And, and, you know, so this is an opportune time to say to them that, you know, here, here's a shortcut. Well, I also think just to like help, um, I, I mean, a couple, like one, one of the new counselors had reached out to me about like a specific concern and, and it just seemed like this is a good time to kind of introduce who we are and mm -hmm. so on. So it also, I mean, I hadn't um, brought it up ahead of the meeting. I really should have sent it around, but as I was working on this memo, um, I did look at our 2017 vision statement. Um, so when I talked to the town manager, right, he's in charge of our charge um, and he's working on revising the charge. Um, and, but then in terms of the vision, I think the tax vision statement, it can still be our own vision, right? That that's not something like the members decide the vision. And um, it's a pretty, it's one paragraph. It was done last in 2017. I don't know, maybe Kim or Bruce were on the committee then. Um, and so maybe we just wanna, and I, I think that that was one of the things I was thinking I would send to the new council members, um, but maybe we could just pull it up quickly. And sure. if we think that it needs a lot of revision, you know, we can bring it back next time. But, um, and let me, I can, I can share. You have it? I just wanted to explain, I was not late. I was trying to get on, but my computer kept shutting itself off and rebooting. Aww. So I apologize that I was delayed. Oh, no worries. What a smart computer. <laughs> <laughs> it does this once in a while. And uh, I was already on for half an hour. Everything was fine. And then all of a sudden it began shutting itself down and trying to reboot. And it did that about five times in a row. So but is it happy now? Good. Seems to be okay now, but if I lose you, you'll know what for the reason why. Oh. Yes, yeah. Well, my favorite is when my kids, you know, decide, oh, they're too cold, and instead of actually wearing a sweater or pants, instead of like tank tops, that they're gonna like blast all the heaters in the family, and then it blows like the fuse, and oh, no. then I lose connection. Okay, so oh. here I'll share my screen right now. Um, oh, happy New Year, everybody! Oh yeah, yeah. happy New Year! Yes. I want some snow. That's my big, that's why I have this background. It's my. You're supposed to get some tonight. Yeah. I've been um, rather annoyed with my co workers down in DC. Over and their, uh, Monday adventures. So. When everywhere else that has snow that doesn't even want snow. Right. I mean, this right. is the big thing. Like, DC didn't want 10 inches of snow. No. <laughs> and my sister works for the federal government. She said they were, the federal government was actually closed. Right. It was. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, and you know, Seattle doesn't really want six inches of snow and Hawaii, <laughs> they have more snow than we have, like up in the volcanoes and stuff. So yeah, I hope we get some. 
and my ice rink really wants it to be below freezing because <laughs> it's not so good yet. Okay, so I'm assuming you can see this. So this is the adopted statement from an earlier iteration of the TAC. Um, I can, you know, read it or we can, I'll read it. I can, I'll just read it through, but then if you have any comments about it, I, I thought the statement works pretty well. I mean, one of the things I'm trying to convey in addition to the fact that we're advisory and so our goal is to help help with decision making and provide like useful feedback and so on to topics sure. that the council can study in depth is that also that we're also thinking about transportation and our transportation network from like a larger perspective than just project by project. Mm -hmm. So um, our vision statement, it says that the Amherst Transportation Advisory Committee works to create and support an economically and environmentally sustainable multimodal transportation system for people and goods to travel safely, conveniently and efficiently throughout the town and to connect with other communities. Biking, walking, public transportation will be essential parts of life and Amherst with enhanced networks and intermodal interconnections. Persons of all ages, abilities, and circumstances will be able to use each of these modes for all their transportation needs. Vehicular traffic will continue to serve personal and commercial purposes with the reduced pollution and traffic congestion. Together, this integrated transportation system will support healthy and thriving people, neighborhoods, village centers, cultural life, and businesses. So it's pretty broad. Does anybody have anything they think we, we need to change or? No, I think it's good. I don't think there's really, it's, you know, broad yeah. enough to continue, right? Yeah, no, I think so. Yeah. I mean, that's my take. I mean, there's some things I might like wordsmith or maybe make it a little shorter or something, but other than that, it's oh, fine. Nice. Um, yeah. That's good. yeah. I think I'm of the opinion if it's not broke, don't fix it. So. <laughs> that's true right. too. Yeah. So, so I guess in that vein, I mean, do we want to just take a vote then just as a committee and just say, since this was, you know, this is, you know, four and a half years old now that we mm -hmm. still support the vision statement as it is written. Yeah, sure. And we can, and then we can share that with the council as well. So yeah, I'll, I'll propose uh, that the tax supports the, the vision statement as written, as written of June 13th, 2017 and wishes and con continues to support it. I'll second, I'll second. Okay. We'll both second. Yeah. We'll second. So, we go. so just for Amber, right? So who are we saying? Do we We're have saying we, the, the tax support? No, no, uh, no, for the second and stuff, right? Oh. So Mark, <laughs> Marcus made the motion. I, I think I was a split second ahead of Kevin. <laughs> oh, fine. We're not going to do rock, paper, scissors. Come on. <laughs> and, and all those, so all those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous decision. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, guys. That's very helpful too. And um, okay, so so one of the things we talked about in terms of you know as we tell um, the council about our priorities, and now we'll share the vision statement, which will give some context for them. Is we talked about that they're the capital projects. Guilford shared his list of the capital projects. You know, we agreed that we don't want to. Um, you know, um, itemize them like number one, number two, and so on. But the what the following projects were, and it seemed like we were pretty much in agreement on those. Um, so I just want to recap those, and we could take an official vote on those too. But then, second, I was also thinking about other things that we wanted to share as priorities, just in terms of the town's um, transportation networks, like in terms of policies or other things we might want to mention specifically. Um, but in terms of the capital projects, so my notes from last time were that the three that the previous tax had voted on pre um, to say that they were priority projects in the past were the North Pleasant Street pedestrian upgrades north of the UMass campus, the ones from East Van Lane to Pine Street. Um, the East Pleasant Street upgrades for pedestrians from Olympia Drive up to Pine Street and then pot wine and west street route 116 those are the ones that were already on the list and then at the last meeting we talked to about adding um just also along 116 adding groff park and those connections with east hadley road and so on and the pomeroy village project and then we also talked about kendrick park because we had been asked to weigh in on that recently so so that's six which of course they're not all going to happen mm -hmm. but does that, does, did I capture that list correctly? Yes. Yeah. Okay. 
so then I guess I would make a motion that um, we say that these six projects that I just listed are like our top priorities in unprioritized order among them. And the reason that we've selected them is um, because they're all contributing to yeah. our, our major concerns, which are safety, accessibility, and the network connectivity. I'd say in no particular order, right? Right, in no particular order, right? Yeah. Thank you. Also, say, kind of, I, I, I'm concerned because, for example, one thing that I've noticed and, and has come up is like um, Amity and the intersection with Lincoln, for example. Yes. Very dangerous intersection. Yes. And so it's just not something that we've really um, considered that much or really um, discussed, um, you know, in a more open way or has been like detected by the, or been analyzed by the town. So, 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 and I, I think that's a pretty critical intersection right there, but so, so I'd like to say that these are identified priorities, but there may be others, you know, do you know what I'm saying? Like, for sure. Suggestion? Yeah. How about if we would include that one and also the South Amherst Common, the traffic pattern there yeah. and any the others as ones we want to investigate this year? Or just say like something about the fact that it's not in completely inclusive, you know, like these are identified priorities. There may be others that mm -hmm. we haven't investigated and right. or have not been through you know, I feel like all those priorities that we just mentioned have been through several ramifications of analysis, you know? So I don't know how, how to couch that because I feel like there are other things that if we got money to do these things, specifically those particular things, we would jump at them because they're also concerns, you know? Sure. So I think, I mean, maybe Guilford would know more about this. I think there has been, I mean, I know um, with the South Amherst Common, right, Bruce and Kim, you've talked about how the TAC had previously spent time looking at that. Um, so it would be you know, good to bring those back up to the surface again. Um, but then with Amity and Lincoln, I mean, Guilford has the town looked, has the DPW looked specifically at that intersection much? A long time ago. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and, I, and I feel like, you know, within the last couple of years, because I once, um, Eve and I with our subcommittee, we were once meeting Jeff McCullough from the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. And it, he, he had mentioned that he was looking at um, Amity and Lincoln or something. So I don't know. I think we had a couple of neighbors come to one of our meetings to talk about that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's, a, there's a couple of different issues on Amity, right? So I mean, as somebody who lives off of Amity, like further down the hill where people are really speeding. Um, so one issue, right, is that there's the no, si the sidewalk ends on the south side of Amity, right. in part because of the grade. So but, your, your list is getting pretty long. No, yeah. it's long. Sure. No, I'm not saying that those, what I, what I, all, all that I mean to say with our priority list is that it's, it's, identified priorities there may be others right that's all that's all i want to kind of couch it I, mm -hmm. well and so guilford right so previously the tac had voted on like one project each year or something right so you show those the spreadsheet and it had the i'm going to stop sharing and it had the um column like tac and i mean a lot of those projects are in progress and even some of the other ones that are also quote on our list, like Pomeroy Village and Groff Park, they're already on the list and Kendrick Park are already on the list. Um, and we're not saying that they all have to be like funded and completely constructed right away. I mean, that's not happening and some of them don't have funding yet, but just that they've already been identified. And I guess, I guess that's what I was wondering if we might just want to say is that these are identified priorities and, and, and um, identified and 
I guess at some level we have some analysis that's been done on all of these. Mm -hmm. Right. So. But just, I think I, it is a good point to bring up where there's other safety issues, yeah. right? Because there are safety issues around the South Common and there's safety issues at Amity and Lincoln. And can we not just say that it's, um, you know, these are uh, identified priorities, but in, but in no means does this limit them? Yeah, it's not the exclusive yeah. list of priorities. Right, right. Yeah. That's, all. That's all I want to say. Yeah, right. That's cool. Because, uh, yeah. Because uh, I'm interested, like, on the Lincoln side, like, the impact, the Amity and Lincoln, like, the impact of the uh, speed camera that's on Amity now, you know, has that kind of done something to do with things, you know, there's a few things on there already that have taken place. Uh, have they done I don't anything? think it's a speed camera. Oh, sorry, a speed <laughs> warning <laughs> sign thing. Right, yeah. well, that's a big yeah. difference. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A camera means you're going to be ticketed or whatever, so... Um. For well, sure, that, yeah. That brings up the question of maybe we need just for ourselves to talk about what what projects do we want to look at this year, such as the ones you're just mentioning? Or, well, or... I, I mean, so the kind of the top projects on our list, I mean, so they're all happening already, right? I mean, almost all of those those top six, right? So the North Pleasant pedestrian upgrade, we already, we've walked it. And evaluated it and it's on the list it doesn't have funding but it's you know it's there and then the east pleasant street one um again that's supposed to i don't know guilford has that already like you had talked i think at our last meeting that that was going to be surveyed soon to start moving that project along so has there been a surveyor yet or so could i propose something since you're putting sure. together the this is the list you're saying to the to the town council or the TSO. Okay. okay. Could I propose that one of your top priorities is having a meeting with them to set up how they want you guys to function in the council government? Because no one, no one has done that, and we've been doing this for three years. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's the top priority: is how how you and the council and the TSO can function. And, and what processes you want to have in place. Um, that's probably, I mean, right now you're kind of over here in this world, they're over here in this world and people just throw things all over, Yeah. but there's no connection. Sorry, I like my hands today. Um, <laughs> no, that's fine. That's a great suggestion. And I, I think it really fits with some of the discussions that councilors have been having and expressing. Right. You know, they really need to, they, they really need, they, they, they've sort of gotten their arms around how they operate as a 13 person committee, which is huge for a committee. Um, but now they need to see better how they operate with their committees and how those subcommittees subsidiaries like us um, interact with the council. I think that's a good idea too, because they, they might say, we, we would like to present you with a list of what we think is most important for projects and would you work on these because we don't have time to do work and right, that's them. true mm -hmm. you work on them and come back to us and say what do you think and mm -hmm. and actually i mean what guilford is bringing up so i mean i did meet with the town manager just to you know talk about how we were having trouble getting quorum and things like that but i mean the right we're a committee under the town manager and the town manager oversees our charge right so our current charge is out of date because it still refers to the select board and so on um i mean one thing is i'm not sure i mean we can say you know that we're interested in understanding the relationship better but i don't necessarily feel like we have that much i mean if the charge is resting with the town manager and then and also with the council how the council wants to use us I mean, part of my introductory memo was to talk about the things that we've worked on before and things, but I don't feel like we actually have the power to be like, this is how we want the relationship to be or whatever, you know, that we're, that we're here if, if the council wants us and we can suggest about how, where we've weighed in before, but I'm not sure that we can really like direct 
the council. But why not? And what the, no, I mean, we can suggest something. Because, because like, this is kind of ridiculous. Like I'm kind of coming to my end of this. Honestly, we have been working as a team yeah. for a unified vision of transportation in the town. Right. And the previous council, not until the last year, really have they started using us intelligently because the council <clears throat> does not possibly understand the issues that we have been dealing with for the last 15 years. I've not been part of that, but at least for the last seven years that I've been sure. part of they cannot intelligently deal with them because they have to deal with a wide array of stuff around the town. Oh, absolutely. A group of dedicated people who are interested and have a history in planning, transportation, and public works in the town. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. I feel very strongly that we should say, hey guys, this is what we've been doing. We have no agenda other than to make this a better place for everyone. So use us. And here's how you can use us. Here's what we can do. And I really feel like we have to tell them what we can for do to them because sure. I, I'm not interested in just like, oh, wait, we have our favorite project because our constituents who have been arguing, you know, the loudest, the squeaky wheel has been mm -hmm. telling us to do this thing. That's not a way to plan a public transportation system. So, so For I sure. feel like this is something that we introduce ourselves and our expertise and what we've done and what we feel we can add to them. Why not? We have nothing to lose because otherwise, like they just say, you know, no, we just want to do it all. And then, no, I mean, that's how I was trying to structure it somewhat just to say like, hey, we're a great resource. This is what we've done and things like that. So I will say that when I talked to the town manager, you know, and I was asking about the charge and so and so he recounted to me and I wasn't even on the TAC then. He recounted to me that in the early days of the council, there was a time and Guilford probably knows this better than I. There was a time when I think something was going to be referred to the TAC. And that there was pushback almost immediately from certain council members who were like, why are you going to tack for feedback on this project when we, the council, are, are in charge of the public way? Okay. So after that, the, that's when, you know, the town manager, I mean, this is what the town manager described to me. And that's when he sort of backed off and was like, well, I, I, I don't know, maybe, <laughs> maybe there isn't a role for tech or whatever. I so as it came out of that, you know, hubris because, because there is no way that anyone hurt, like the new committee could ever have the amount of knowledge that we have. And like, we've been working with the public works director for a long time and, and we're not doing it. Okay, fine, whatever. But we've been doing it in a way that is not nonpartisan and for a mm -hmm. public good in a way that is in incredibly transparent. And I think there are much bigger issues in town that the town council should be dealing with, could be dealing with, and right. instead of these issues that are incredibly complex and connected. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, I, I Honestly, no, I agree. I mean, I say we put it out there. We it, put it like we, doing anything other than like what we've been doing, which is in a non part of, you know, non, no district, district, non district way, just like making the network better for everybody. And that's all that we can really do. And like being fed things that are you know, I'm happy if, if things finally come to fruition and they want, I'd like, I like, for example, I think we did a great job with the, um, with the, the park thing that we just did, you know, that was awesome. And, and we gave a really unbiased opinion based on all the expertise that we have here. Mm -hmm. sure. That's something that we should really highlight. For sure. It's, yeah. It takes a lot of work off someone else's plate. That's all. Well, and like Pomeroy Village, we weighed in on Pomeroy Village, and yeah, first, definitely. Mm -hmm. 
just need to get time to sit down with them to, yeah. to go for the point. Well, I mean, I once... know, in a certain age, it's like give them, you know, these are our best bits. Just tell them to sit down and talk to us. Sure. If they want us, they shall come. <laughs> well, I think you've made great inroads in the last year. And yeah. the person who three years ago wanted to know why it was going to TAC is one of the ones who now likes TAC, but she's not on the town council anymore. Um, but, but I think you're at the point now where you can actually set more of your agenda and get more into the operations and be more of a be more of a receiving and reviewing and get things out that gets done. And mm -hmm. sure. I appreciate what you said, Kim, and I agree with you. Yeah, so so perhaps we could, um, you know, as, 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 I don't know if, if a couple of us or all of us should go to a meeting where we are on the agenda and we can give a, a, a presentation and, you know, introducing all of us and our time and what we've done and what we think we're useful for. And um, I, I feel like that's the kind of thing. Yeah. And it, if you haven't noticed, I'd be really happy to participate in that conversation. That sounds great. Well, so, I, I mean, that's where we're it. waiting for the TSO to be created, right? And right. reach out yeah. to the TSO yeah. and say, hey. So, uh, the, the, you know, the notion so. of going before the council as a whole right now, I think is, is no. not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, they don't know what they're so, doing. So, um, I mean, there, there's a maturation process here that, yeah. you know, we're in phase two. Yeah. So for the next couple of years, we'll see some changes in how the council uh, behaves and what they take on and what they don't. Um, you also have to keep in mind that the bulk of the council represent districts. So having, you know, um, there's some pros and cons to having a neutral body that doesn't look at just the district. So the, right. the trick would be the trick would be to get a, a, get some time with the TSO after it's reorganized sure. and yeah. say. You know, give us an hour, let us, you know, give you some okay. idea of what we've done. And you guys at least start thinking about how you'd like to have us um, offer you as the committee or the council as a whole some input. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, the council's got to, the council's got to learn to trust, the council's got to learn to trust committees. They well, haven't they learned, can't, and they, they can't they do everything. That yet completely. You know? and, and, and it's and, and Chris is just Chris is just logged in, and she's she's probably saying, "Oh, you yeah. just noticed." Uh, <laughs> they, you know, that they. Well, they, I mean, that's what one of the party counselors made that in their co public comments about how they yeah. shouldn't duplicate existing committees and so mm -hmm. on. So, well, it's it's part of it is you know, and part of it you've got six new counselors, and they're going to have mm -hmm. to come to the understanding that they're um, a couple of whom seem to be single issue types and, and they're, they're going to have to come to the understanding that they don't have all the time or expertise in the world either. Um, that at some point they're going to have to, they're going to have to, they're going to have to look at what people do and trust other mm -hmm. people to give them information. We're going so, yeah, um, to become the town's transportation research board. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And they, you know, it'll, 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 it'll happen, but, it, it will happen for so sure. Get, get it started and then mm -hmm. um, I'm yeah. optimistically, I'd say give it a year. Frustrating as that might be. And on that note, well, so right in, well, this is one of the reasons too I wanted uh, the town manager to appoint some new members because, uh, well, everybody's terms are going to be officially over by the summer, though, like people mm -hmm. like yourself, Bernie and Marcus can roll over to like new terms to keep us going. But, um, but yeah, I mean, currently, I think that our, our last appointments like end on in June 2022, which is five months. So, <laughs> but, and also in a year, right, too, there will be different people on the TSO. So that's why I was sort of writing this memo to also reach out to the council as a whole, just to be like, hi, council, we're the TAC. And like, we're going to work 
you know, we hope to work with the TSO and the council as well, right? Because particularly if they shrink the council, I mean, they shrink the subcommittee membership, like we won't actually interact closely with that many members, but it's still good when the things come from TSO to the council for people to have a little bit of background on who the TAC is. That's my thinking, so. All right, so I'll, I'll keep wor working on this. And um, I mean, I can circulate it to Kim. It's, Kim, it's great that you wanna be involved in how those conversations, I'm hoping, I'm really looking forward to seeing who's on the new TSO, you know, who do we work with most closely. Um, I mean, do you, I mean, based on this discussion, I'd still like to put something in people's hands in writing just so that they can at least look it over. Does that make sense? And then we can follow up by doing a presentation because I do think, I mean, there is a lot of information coming in, you know, to the new counselors and stuff, but at the same time, if we don't have a conversation with them right away, at least they could be thinking about what we've said. And um, I, I don't know, I think we kind of keep things hidden and say, you know, if you want to find out more, come talk to us. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, to Guilford's point, it's been long enough, like, Right. We've been telling you since until we're blue in the face about what we should be doing, what right. we think we can be doing and everything like that. Just like, if you want to come talk to us, we'll tell you everything, you know. So let's get it. Let's stop dancing around the issue. Get get to the point, find out what we need to do. Find out the working relationship and then we can figure out how our current because it may be, you know, I think someone was pointing out earlier, they may have some ideas. So let's go through their ideas and bring it out and, you know, come to get, you know, understand what's going on. Because, yeah, like you were saying earlier, a lot of the stuff we've been saying is priority hasn't got funding. That doesn't mean, right. mean it's not a priority. It right. means we haven't had the opportunity. So how do we work that into that relationship? But, and, mm -hmm. oh, Chris has got a, a hand up. So. I, yeah, may I just say a couple of words? Definitely. So I think it would be helpful in your um, discussion or your communication to point out some of the things that you've done in the past. And some of you are recently on the TAC, but um, I can remember, um, you know, some important things that happened in the past. And one of them was the influence that the TAC had on the design of the um, Northampton Road project. So, um, and Kim will remember that because we went through you know, a lot of analysis of what was being presented by the state, by the Mass DOT. And, um, you know, they made public presentations and not, the public didn't show up, but the TAC showed up and gave them some really good input. And the design that we ended up with was really in response to things that the TAC contributed, um, along, yeah. of course, with Guilford and the DPW and everything. But I think, you know, having examples of that, that people, people on the council now don't know about that because that happened uh -huh. like, I don't know, five years ago. But, you know, having examples of things like that where you did have an influence in the past, I think were, would be good examples for the town council to realize that you're useful. So Chris, are you referring to the Northampton Road project, the one from like South, um, from University Drive up to the center of town, the one that's just getting under construction now? Yes, yeah, we had a lot of input on that. Um, particularly, I would say, well, Kim and Eve, and I can't quite remember who else was on the tech. I Karen Jones, and I mean, um, Karen had waited in at some point. On some Karen was gone by then, I think, but uh, okay, yeah. you will probably remember who was on the tech when, when the mess DOT presented, and um, you know, the this the width of the. Well, whether there were sidewalks on both sides, you know, where uh -huh. the bike ways would be and all of those things were um, were changed from the original plan by the input from the TAC. And that okay. is a huge piece of our real estate or the state's real estate that influences us. And so things, you know, pointing out things like that, I think would be useful. That's and if I can think of anything more, I'll let you well, know. Well, right. And I mean, and we were talking before you came on, Chris, about um, like Kendrick Park and um, Pomeroy Village and other places, you know, that the pack has weighed into. So, also and the right. crosswalk designs, which, you know, we can see that right. downtown, the new crosswalks. Yeah, the crosswalk designs. Sure. They're so great. I love them. They do look good. Yeah. 
they look really good, yeah. They really so. stand out. Yeah, they're much easier to see. Yeah. So. Hammer's College now likes them too. Oh wow! Then let me get some wow, money from them yeah. and put them everywhere in town. I'd love to see them all over the place. Yeah, exactly. They have so much. So, I mean, it's yeah. Anyway, we can get to town on that one. Yeah. And they'll hold up too, right? Like with the the cross, yeah, with the brick and stuff. Isn't it like? Isn't it inlaid a little bit to make it anyway? Every every five to ten years, we'll have to go in and touch them up. Oh, okay. Rip them out and okay. redo them, but it's 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 easier to change because you just take a milling machine and mill the old stuff off, and you put new stuff down. It's not like you have to dig it all out and close no. it. And mm -hmm. it's better than the than the flashing lights in the pavement, which uh, those were those were destined to fail <laughs> with those crosswalks. Okay, um, so I mean, so why don't I mean I I think what I would do then I'll I'll still write a little something. But maybe we don't specify like too many. I mean, we can specify projects that we've already been involved with, but we don't have to talk about like our priorities per se, but just that, you know, we are, you know, I, I would mention some of them. It wouldn't be like, here's our list of like priority projects, but it'd just be like, we've been involved with these projects and and like we have safety concerns about other projects, other locations and so on too. I don't know if you'd want to get into this much so. detail, but you could also mention that we've actually gone out and, and, and we've walked these routes, such as in North Amherst. And, Absolutely. That's a really that's, good point. I mean, that's something that the, the council will never have the time to do. But like you, I mean, Eve, Eve had showed me them and they're actually still on the TAC website, like those walking tours that you had done. I think there's like four, at least four walking tours that were done and those are very like yes. important. So for sure. Oh, that's a great idea, Bruce. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. That sounds good. So do we want to bring up, I mean, I guess I'll, we'll just leave it as is. I know we had started talking about, you know, in terms of priorities, not just in terms of projects, but in terms of things that we might want to look at, which is one reason I put, for example, like the whole snow removal thing on the agenda. Just we haven't had any snow yet, but I think we will. And to me, like that's a big access and safety issue too. Yeah. No, so I'm not. Like I'm ready. not sure the best way to um, address it per se. Like as Bernie brought up, it's a little tricky. <laughs> um, and then in one of our meetings too, we had talked about lighting, which and of course lighting is really complicated as well. But yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think let's let's get get in touch. Let's start yeah, talking. Yeah, for sure. Yep, and then sure. you know, then let's, let's see what, what, how it you know how okay. things lay down because. Sounds I mean, good. like on East Pleasant, just at Strong Street, that crosswalk there has got terrible lighting. So, so there's like all sorts of things we could address, but yeah, let's, let's get the conversation started. Let's, you know, maybe yeah, and way. actually, one particular intersection that's been a big concern to me recently, and I know, for example, right, there's um, some shared streets money or some DOT money that's improving along triangle, triangle between, um, well, and also on North Pleasant Street with the crosswalks like from Kendrick Park and along Prey Street and then coming out onto Triangle Street and connecting with Triangle like over to the community pool and things like that. But there's this one, the one intersection that's a big concern to me is the one, um, like right, right past the entrance to the high school, like where there's the street, I oh shoot, I forget the name of it right now. The street that goes up from like, um, the street that comes up from, I think somebody might be using the heat as a Tracy's house. At Kellogg Street. Kellogg, that's right. Where Kellogg comes out to a uh, triangle. Yeah, and then there's the Smith one, right? Oh, not the Smith. The one with a couple of the Amherst College dorms on it. On Triangle. So you've got that's, the catalog. That's Sealy. Yeah. What's the one that is directly across from the, the exit from the high school? That's Sealy. 
Yeah, because that's that's really, no, that's, that's Kellogg. Sorry. A lot of kids are crossing. Like that seems like a really busy intersection and one with lots of children too. So, which I think isn't currently marked actually. Oh, less, less. It is. Oh, it, it's um, it's Lessy at Mattoon's. Here, I got it right here. I'll, I'll pop it up. Uh, hold on. <clears throat> yeah, Eve lost her Zoom. Con I mean, Tracy lost her Zoom connection. She's connecting back in, just so you know. I'll know. So this is the intersection you're talking about. Kellogg comes up down by the restroom area, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. Leslie comes in just past Mattoon. This is the one you can't see very well. Right. You're flying around the corner. Yeah. I mean, really, you need a, a, a roundabout at Triangle and Mattoon. But. So I was thinking further down Triangle um, by the exit to the high school. Yeah. Um, that right here? Yeah, there seem to be a lot of kids who've crossed there. That seems to be somehow a busy intersection. I'm not sure why. I don't know what the advantage is to doing that for kids, but. Well, this, this brings up, Gilford, is there any chance of getting any more funds from the uh, Safe Walk to Schools program? That remember we had somebody talk to us about that. Oh yeah. It used to be Sorry, candidate next, for more yeah. lighting and, and the new crosswalk design. It doesn't, uh, Safe Fruits to School doesn't go for um, secondary schools, high schools and middle schools. Oh, um, that's too bad. Um, Tracy can't get back in. It oh. says she gets a, I can't, she can't connect. Let me oh. stop sharing and try to bring her back. Sorry, she said her internet is down, so. Oh, yeah, she's not there. Yeah. Um. Could she phone in? Is she able to join us by phone? Yes, she's going to try that next. Okay. I guess I, Smith takes you into town, right? I didn't hear your comment, Marcus. What did you say? Oh, sorry. I was saying, I guess Smith takes you into town. It takes oh, you to cool. Kellogg, and then you come into town yeah. on Kellogg. Yeah. I'll zoom out a bit. And would you rather have the aerial or would you like the... Um, oh, that's useful. I mean, the reason there's no crosswalk at Smith is there's no sidewalk on Smith. Uh, mm. Yeah, because people just cross into that neighborhood from there, I think. So there's a, at Kellogg, where Kellogg comes out here, there's a crosswalk here. Oh, there is. Hmm. And then there actually is a, a crosswalk. There's a crosswalk, which is right here at Lessie. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the one you can't see very well. I didn't know there was one there. <laughs> <laughs> that one Probably because you can't see it very well. <laughs> that, that has a bad sight line from traffic coming from Triangle from the roundabout. Right. Yeah. I cross there a lot, and I, I have to always hurry because all of a sudden the car just appears. Um, Gilbert, Tracy's trying to call in through the attendee line. Okay. okay. Let me stop sharing so I can see everything. Can you hear me, Tracy? Me? I am unmuted. Thank you. Oh, good. You're there. Welcome back. Thank you. You would never know you live in the center of town. <laughs> well, hard to hear, Tracy. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Hold on. Oh, I can hear you better now. I feel like one of those ads. Can you hear me now? Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> sort of. Okay. Voice is muffled. Um, um, yeah. So I'm sorry. I guess we're going to be showing it here. I guess that's the end. You're really hard to hear, Tracy. Yeah, yeah we yeah. can't hear you now. Yep, it's very difficult to hear you, Tracy. Oh, okay. Hold on. Now this that is better. good. That's better. Uh, all right. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's much Great. better. Um, 
Yeah, just that um, intersection at um, that in, that that road that comes out right near the high school. Yeah. So which one are you talking about? Because we were just just looking at the map. Yeah. Um, Is it marked already? The one you're talking about? Uh, oh, which map are you looking at? Our map. Aerial of the Google Maps, I guess, or no, Amherst. No, Amherst maps. Um, I'm talking about the one. I mean, I'm talking about okay. So if you were on, I'm talking about the one if you were coming from the center of town on um, like, you know, from like East Pleasant and Kendrick Park, and you came along Triangle, and you went past the entrance to the high school, and then it's the next small road. It's on the right oh, yeah. side. That's funny. That's what I was just talking about too, because I've what, yeah. What's that one called? Lessie? Is it Lessie? That's no. Lessie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so, so what, I, what I've noticed a lot. So I when I used to be a driving instructor, and I would also do these on-road driving studies, and you know, some of my colleagues would say, "Oh, we should use the," you know, particularly because we'd be working with high school students, and they always wanted to have the cars go up that hill and then turn. Uh, um, triangle, like turn left across the, you know, the other traffic, but it's just so, the sight lines are so bad right now, and um, and when I, and I've been walking that neighborhood a lot lately, too, and what I realized is, like, if the crosswalk was closer to the high school driveway, that the, the sight lines are just so much better, and I realized that there's on the, um, on the side across from the driveway that there's no sidewalk there now. Um, but it's like a really small stretch of street. And if it, if it is possible to ever move that crosswalk and then have a sidewalk along that short section, that would be yeah. super helpful. Yeah. The, the, the problem is, is the road is actually, the gray is the roadway and there's this red line here. And then these brown lines are the contours. It's a very steep embankment that comes down from here. So you really couldn't put, they really they didn't put the sidewalk there because it's such a steep hill that you'd have to cut into. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's no, but so right here, the road, there's not a big steep hill. You're saying across from the high school driveway entrance, but there's a big... Um, yeah. No, from Lessie uh, up to Mattoon, that hill is is too is kind of too steep right. to put the sidewalk in. Oh yeah, no, but I'm actually just talking along tri the, along triangle, like along triangle, that little section of triangle between the high the driveway, the high school driveway entrance and Lessie. Right. And you could have a sidewalk just along that little stretch. So that's the one I'm talking about. That stretch oh, right. okay. Okay. has is yeah. too. Drive by, it's really steep right in there. You'd have to cut way back into the hill and take a lot of trees out and to put a sidewalk in there. That's why there's no sidewalk there. Okay, but I mean, so I did notice that there is, um, I mean, the other option I guess could be to have maybe some better signage or to have like a flashing. I mean, that might be a good place if you could have a pedestrian activated signal where you could have like flashing lights or something because um In because your... there is there are some signage to show that there's a crosswalk there but i i think you know where the i'd have to look at it again but where the signs are placed like if you're you're kind of coming if you're coming from toward near the high school and you're going towards main street um, you don't necessarily see those like pedestrian crossing signs very far in advance of the actual crosswalk, you know, and as you're coming around that curve and driving pretty quickly, <laughs> like, anyway, it just mm -hmm. seems like the cross, the cross in there is not that space, that's all. So that might be one of the crosswalks that you might think you want enhanced, cro the ha enhanced crosswalks mm -hmm. at from your standards, right? Yeah. Right. No, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and also because that goes along with the projects that the town's already doing about improving the access along Triangle in general, you know? Yeah, I mean, like couldn't we put... One little couldn't, more segment. So couldn't we put a, a raised crosswalk at, at uh, Kellogg, too, to help slow the traffic down? Um, You could. Along Triangle? Change back to the picture, sorry. 
Yeah, no, you're cool. Because I mean, there's the there is the crosswalk there. If you, you, could, put, you, if you made it a raised one, it would certainly slow the traffic down, and then potentially well, raise it at Lyle at Leslie too. Um, yeah, um, and you're, there are improvements planned already at Prey and Triangle, right? Um, but are th those are those going to be raised, or are they just were they going to be at grade? Right now they're at grade, but then again, okay. we that oh, we lost Chris. Is Chris still here? I'm here. Hold on, let me make this. Uh, we we kind of. I mean, you can have you have very good visibility at Prey and Triangle. Yeah. There's not really a oh, need yeah, for, for for flashing lights. We were kind of hoping to take one of these flashing light pairs and bring them to Lessie. Mm -hmm. That'd be Lessie. great. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that would be far better. Be and then yeah. one of the things one of the things we would we would propose doing is setting them up like they are on Pine Street at Cushman Common, mm -hmm. where they're actually both on the same side of the road, but because of the curve. One's facing better along the curve, and the other one faces better along the yeah. approach. Ah. Um, so that that's mm -hmm. something that we're kind of. Jason's been talking, I think, to Ben about it. Um, we just need to kind of flesh out the details better, and um, but that's something we've kind of wanted to do is take. There's a whole bunch of lights that are proposed down here. We think that's a little too much. Um, take one down here and maybe one more someplace else um well, sounds good that that intersection at prey street it, it's very you know it's used just particularly in the mornings as kids are walking to and in, in the afternoons from school um and i think you know but but you're right like the sight lines are really good there and people are already either coming from the traffic circle coming down um that street triangle you know they're already kind of going slow and have their eyes out because yeah. it's a very dangerous you know it's a busy intersection and as well as coming from the high school you've already noticed like there are lots of kids around so we'll slow down so um i i feel like that intersection itself while busy and um is is pretty well i don't think people are driving so crazy but i agree down further down the street towards that corner um, is a much better idea for, you know. Well, right in Lessie, it's like you're going downhill. Yes. That's on triangle <laughs> towards Main Street. And especially with that blind curve, it's like, I don't know, it always feels really fast to me. Yeah. So, yeah, no, that makes sense. Well, and the other thing that came up, I was listening in on the D, the Disability Access Advisory Committee meeting, and I mean, they have concerns about the section of Kellogg that where, well, there used to be, it used to be have painted line to kind of say, oh, this is like a, this is the path you can walk on safely um, because there's a section along Kellogg from when you're in town and then you're going towards the high school, <clears throat> right? That there's no, and I'm sure some, some of this is probably a great issue too, but there's no actual sidewalk there. But, but there used to at least be some like painted line to show that like, this is like supposed to be like a pedestrian zone and a car zone. But now like the last time I walked that way, like there's no paint or anything anymore. I don't know. But I know the DAC, they were asking about improving that connection too with Kellogg. I mean, Guilford, are there many options there for that? I'm sorry, on the, on the south side of Triangle? Yeah, on the south side of Triangle, how or there's a, a section where there's no sidewalk. It's between, it's like the town side of Smith, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. you're talking about Kellogg going into Smith. Yeah. Right, yeah. Um, the thing to do, I mean, Smith is awfully narrow too. Um, you could you could get a sidewalk in there, but you can get rid of the parking. There's some parking in there too, um, and then you could put a crosswalk back here at Triangle if you wanted to. But there's already, yeah. I don't know if you need a um, one right there, but yeah. Well, there is there is a uh, Google Maps has a crosswalk there. There's, uh, I think. Well, that's not, what I was looking. 
I don't think there is. No, no. it doesn't have one. That's one. Okay, I, I've got it. I've got what looks. I've got Google Maps on my screen here, my big screen, and it, it does look like there's a crosswalk there. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. How that's weird. Google Maps uh, mapped. <laughs> well, we. I'll have to go back and check. This, I mean, we actually do have new new imagery, but we wow. haven't put it on the. We haven't put it on yet. So this but might it's be not, no, it's not on the it's not on the street view. This huh. might be from like ten years ago or more, Gilfred. These pictures. Yeah. These I think might be older. <laughs> the uh, oh nine. It might nine. be the originals. I've crossed there, and I I think there is a crosswalk. Well, I'm not. I don't think there's a, a ramp on the other <laughs> side. No. There's not a ramp. No, I don't think so. Because we actually repaved this road within the last six, seven years. And if we if there was a crosswalk, we would have put a ramp in and made it a mm -hmm. little more. Yeah. But, it, but there's nowhere for the ramp to go. And we technically don't go to nowhere. We just don't do that usually. <laughs> that's a good if, plan. If you look on Street View, there's a gentleman that's not is about not to pick up his dog's droppings. <laughs> at, at, at Smith and Triangle. Okay, he's no, not I, getting hey, it. Yeah, we don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> well, and so also, if you go back on Triangle, back towards town, there's that one little segment. I think I asked you about this before, Guilford. Like just um, to the east side of like One East Pleasant, where the sidewalk is like torn up or whatever. Oh, yeah. Right here. Is that, mm -hmm. is that, and that is going to be fixed sometime or something, right? They're supposed to. They just haven't done okay. it yet. It's, it's right. not something, right? It's right here. Yeah, that. Well, there's at least there's no concrete barriers or anything there anymore. So, but. Have you eaten at the new Mexican restaurant? Yes. I've eaten at the one where Reyes is. I haven't eaten at the one where right where yeah. was. Yeah. 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 There, yeah. Not bad. No, it was good. Oh. Space is nice. They've done a good job with the space. Nice. Sorry for the squirrel moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that's good. Okay. Let me turn the, I'll stop sharing. Oh, no, that's good. That's good. Well, yeah, so I think, I mean, we can, you know, those are the kinds of things we can tell the, um, the TSO and things that we're looking at too. Yeah, so I have a, sure. sorry, um, I do have a quick question though for Guilford. Why isn't there on Kellogg at Smith there is ro uh, sidewalk on one side but not on the other? Like, is there a specific reason? I mean, it would take out somebody's hydrangea, but on Kellogg. Yeah, on Kellogg, like as you're heading into town from Smith. Um, so there's a sidewalk on both sides until you get to the like sharp turn by the housing authority. Yeah. And then the sidewalk really kind of goes away. Right. And then it comes back again. And then it comes back again. There, and in the sharp curve, there's actually a drop off that mm. drops off into those properties. And it's, it's all um, it's due to topography mm -hmm. i mean so i guess on the is there an option to even just like paint it or something like paint the kind of shoulder of the road or what to make it look more like pedestrian um, even if it's not an actual set like above grade sidewalk it's been painted a few times um it does not last very long like what if we call like it was painted I don't know if the if Amherst has this very much, but like if you painted like that whole kind of side lane like a different color or something, does that help? Yeah, yeah. it would help, but it would help, but it's just a matter of there's no money for that. No, no, right? no. It's um well, and that also wouldn't really address the issue that the DAC brought up about. You know, like if you have somebody who's visually impaired or something, mm -hmm. right? They wouldn't tell. It would have. It would have to be tactile so that they mm -hmm. would actually know that we, that was. They would feel it because that paint is probably about a oh, it is. two millimeters higher than the road. Oh, you, they, okay. you would feel a bump and a change, and, oh. and you could see 
most people who have some vision could see the change in color. So if you did it blue, it would be different than the asphalt or if you did it yellow or. Does the tech know that um, we're doing work on Kellogg Avenue from Smith into town? Do they know that that's a CDBG project? It, no. Yeah, it starts at the curve, not a little bit, yeah. Yeah, it starts at the curb and works its way back toward North Pleasant Street and the sidewalks on both sides are being redone. And um, mm. what else is being done there? Except for the sidewalks by the trees in the church, that's yeah. being left alone. Mm -hmm. Well, like the sidewalk next to the post office and stuff, right? It's not very good. It's all yeah, kind of torn up being, and, I mean, yeah, right. Yeah, that sidewalk, I mean, that sidewalk's done and the sidewalk past the church is redone. Well, yeah, yeah, well, we had that presentation, Chris, at the last meeting, right, about the different pedestrian projects. So mm. I'm pretty sure Maureen had brought that up. Mm -hmm. okay. You're not widening the footpath, just replacing? The sidewalk? Yeah, sorry. No, it is, it's just, uh, it's pretty, it will go as wide as it can, but the property mm -hmm. is really tight in there, and it's mm -hmm. pretty much already at the property lines. Okay, yeah. So, in terms of other, pro, you know, other kind of like policies and projects, I think we could bring up the crosswalk. So, I had put the crosswalk guidelines on the um, agenda just because, you know, Guilford, you had mentioned at one of our recent meetings that you had a few concerns. But as Kim said, like the guidelines, those examples that were provided in the draft crosswalk guidelines are already being used. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, maybe that could be something, it seems like that wouldn't be too hard necessarily for us just to kind of revisit that and say, like, we recommend approval. And that could be something that we could send to the TSO and then go to the council just to like make it official. Would that make sense? You could. What, the last Is there any we... advantage or I, I know, uh -huh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, you had mentioned the last time the TAC talked about it, I guess we had proposed maybe some changes so then you had concerns about them, but I think we could revisit that and get it adopted. Yeah, you, you guys wanted to reference a whole bunch of, um, you wanted to pull in a whole bunch of direct references and have them actually in there um, and have them written out in the policy. Um, but I was, it might, it might be much easier just to reference those <laughs> instead of actually pulling the wording out and putting it in there. Because if the wording changes, then the policy would have to be changed again. But just to reference the, the guidelines for mass DOT and... Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. That would be easier. And then um, you would also want to reference a lot of the guidelines that the DACC were, were, were is very happy and they want to have seen, they want to do. Um, but some of those are not being wholeheartedly accepted in the um, outside the DA, DACC world. Well, you're saying the pro WAG stuff, right? The stuff that's all in terms of ADA yes. um, enforcement yeah. or whatever. So, I mean, again, but that sounds like something again that we could, maybe some of that could be referenced just as you're suggesting like to go to those sites and not actually say it all, you know. Well, so they they would like to, they would like to see the standards that are enforced on building properties, enforced on roadways and sidewalks. So right now, the building standard is your walkway has to be less less than five percent. The road out outside Main Street beside Town Hall is greater than six percent. So you would have to have some type of either extensive ramp system with railing all along it or switchbacks, which requires more property. Um, so then you're looking at, well, if you have railings, on, you have to have railings on both sides, you have no access to bus stops or it's, it gets, mm -hmm. it's really not, I understand what they're trying to do and I, I applaud them for trying to do it, um, but it really makes the roadside very difficult um 
when, when we build north when we redo the north common and you see what we do for the handicap spaces there that meets ada requirements and that's going to be that's on street handicap parking and the reason we don't do on street handicap parking is because you have to make it two percent across the, the it has to be almost flat it can be no more than two percent across slope and um two percent um going with the slope as well cross slope and with the slope um, and that's very difficult to do without ra raising things up and having steep drop offs on one end or steep rises on the other end. So if you say you want to reference all those things and then, then you're opening that door is what I'm saying and you're making the sure. projects much harder to accomplish. Well, that let's take a look at that can is that would that work with your schedule if we bring it up next time and just. Oh yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Let's do I'm, that. I'm, and I I'm actually, gonna, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to give you a 15 minute warning. I should have. Well, I think we want to wrap up anyway, right? We like to go till uh, six thirty, and then we have mm -hmm. um, we have Bruce remind us to end the meeting. <laughs> um, but to, just in the um, so Guilford, I would love to talk about that next time. We could bring it. You know, we can circulate it in advance of the meeting, and then just talk about it. The other thing I was wondering, I was going back through, you know, some of the other um, policies and recommendations that had come to us, and I was looking at the TSO's guidelines in terms of on-street parking and so on. And what I remembered is that back, I think, in March of 2021, um, you would send a memo to the town manager, you know, talking about the roadway with some parking, where you were asking you know, for example, on some of the, like on the arterial roads that we risk that there be a prohibition on parking. But then I didn't actually see that get into, and maybe I'm missing it or it's in a different document. I didn't actually see that get into the final TSO guidelines. It didn't or make it. go to the council. No, it didn't make it at all. Okay. So, I mean, maybe that's something that, I mean, again, it's not, it's not, totally in tax hands, but I'm, I mean, looking back at your memo and part of it was too, was, I mean, it seems that when we have this list of arterial streets, you know, there's so many issues with um, like snow removal, but, but you had brought up in your memo, even about like the bike lanes and the shoulders and things like that. Like, it's just not, they're not great for people to park. And so maybe if, even if the council didn't adopt and say they were gonna ban parking on like, the, I think your original memo said like 25 of them, but like to pick them, because you had even brought this to the TAC, I think like two years ago, before we shut down for COVID, I remember you coming to the TAC and saying the DPW was interested in restricting it. And here is a list for those major roads. Um, so I, I can bring that. I mean, a good place to look at that is on like parts of East Pleasant Street where you have some of the, I hate to say this, rental housing, and when they need extra parking, they park on the shoulder of the road, but then East Pleasant Street has a bike lane down it from the fire station all the way down to Pine Street. So you have cars that are parked in that bike lane and on the, in the grass, um, but that actually in, impedes people who want to bike on it. South, South Pleasant's another street where, especially around the public works building, there's rental properties where if they have guests, they tend to park on the street um but they park half in the bike lane and half in the on the shoulder and on south pleasant street they've actually destroyed the shoulder and taken part of the bike lane away because it's just been broken up by driving across it so much mm -hmm. so that was that's the impetus behind that and pine street i mean you shouldn't have parking on pine street well yeah i mean i think maybe it could come back i mean like i see people sometimes parked on you know 116 or i mean there's just a lot of places that people shouldn't be parked like right on the roadway and like triangle, like we're talking about triangle, right? Like, right. That they should only park if it's actually designated and otherwise just no. <laughs> so yeah. there's a few people who park in the bus stops, actually. It's kind of fun to watch. <laughs> fun for who exactly? <laughs> well, for us to watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, so in terms of I mean, you had raised a lot of good points when you brought it up to us now, like two years ago, and it was in the stuff that originally went to the TSO. So I'm sorry it all got dropped. 
yeah is there should. is there anything that TAC can do to support that or would you could you just bring it back to the council again or something i don't know um we could bring it back i mean um yeah i can bring it back and then we can just see where it goes well, especially it's like the winter now and stuff too it's yeah just, i mean we there's no this is why i said you know when you want to talk your top priority with the tso yeah. and it should be to put how do you want us to work what do you want us to do i mean mm -hmm. if, if it's if things are to, if things are to go to you first do i take it you know do we you know, do chris or i take things to you and then take it to the council or do we take it to the council and then let the council refer it back to you um those right. are the things those are the questions we have but the, it seemed like recently, I mean, what I was seeing happen the most, like with Kendrick Park and things, and I don't, I mean, it, it seems a little long winded to me in some cases, right? But the, what was happening was that you, you or you and the town manager were sending stuff to the council, and then it was getting referred sometimes to TSO. And then TSO would be, and they say, oh, do we want any committees to weigh in and then it would come to tack so like we weren't i mean there were times earlier on that you had you know particularly when we visited the crosswalks or something you had said hey let's get some tack input and i've seen that too with the dac like let's get some dac input yes um, but then but if, but then if, if that's truly the way they want it to go then the way it would work for you guys if you have something you want to work on you could work on it give it to me or chris then we would take it to the town manager to send to the council then the council would send it to that routine so it doesn't cut you guys out from the way i see it it doesn't cut the tack out from right putting their own little things they want to work on and interject them in right. um, it, it just gives you the path this is how you do it you put your thing together and then chris or i bring it and push it out to the council to paul and then the council then decides okay yes we like this we don't want we don't need to refer it to anybody we're just going to vote it or okay, we're going to refer it to the TSO, and the TSO says, "Oh, we love this. We're going to recommend it." And it goes back, and they vote it. Right. Or yes, the TSO says, "Okay, let's talk to the TAC about this. We have a problem, one or two problems. Let's mm -hmm. work with them." Well, so I mean, yeah, I mean, I think in the case of the crosswalk guidelines, they had already come to TAC before, right? So we could kind of advance them that way. Like, like here's the tax draft guidelines and the town's already been using some of them and like it's it coming up that way and yes but like with this thing with the roads it was really coming out of dpw and i thought you made a good case for it so i don't necessarily feel like it needs to i mean i'm not sure how tac can really help with that so much um but... well let's just figure it out yeah so and um and actually so when we were just you know we were talking earlier one thing I was wondering about you were talking earlier with the GIS layers and so on. So Gilford, did you think it would work out to maybe have one of those UMass grad students and GIS like help work with you? Yeah, I actually haven't answered that person, but yeah, I mean it'd be fine. I mean, we only did you have... ever did you ever talk to them or anything? Like no, it everything got kind of really busy at the end of oh, the Oh sure, year. no, for sure, for sure. Okay. And I got I got the privilege this year of staying this year. Everybody else went away. <laughs> Me too. Oh, lucky you. <laughs> so sorry. That's but that okay. means you don't have to do it again for like a few years or something, right? Uh, it's okay. Yeah. It's my it's my turn. Um so okay, so maybe I I mean, Eva's in that department, you know, it's in the geography department, though that's like a special major or whatever. Yeah, she sent um, me the contact. I can reach back out to the contact. Oh, okay. I didn't know I didn't know if you had reached out to him at all or or but okay. Yeah. No. But it seemed I mean it seems like you know, maybe helping with some of the GIS layers and stuff would help. I mean, we're interested in, of course, for the bike ped plan, but also just um but even, you know, some of these other layers too, like the aerials, just the, the grunt work, <laughs> some of the grunt work with GIS. So. Mm -hmm. So. Yes, I mean, I can talk to Mike, Michael, Mike Warner, and right. see if he wants some help getting them updated because he's a little behind too. Oh. So it yeah. seems like we just um, decided on um, some agenda items for the next TAC meeting. Um, but perhaps, do we know what the date of the next TAC meeting is? Because that's the next uh, agenda. Right. Item. So 
I mean, typically we've been meeting on the first and the third Thursdays, which I mean, I'm happy. So that would be the 20th. We had talked at our last meeting about asking the town manager to come and join us at that meeting. Um, I did reach out to him on that and extend an invitation to him. He did not respond. Uh, we could do that. Um, or like we could... our next TAC meeting might be busy with um, updating the crosswalk guidelines and yes. um, um, somehow getting together a support for the parking ban on the right. Well, so maybe we we'll on that until the next. Um, sure. And maybe yeah, that's fine. Yeah. And I also think that he's probably waiting. Like he typically supports the TSO a lot. Like he goes to the TSO meetings and all these things. So we um, could hold off meeting with him until February. But and by the next meeting too, we'll know when the next TSO meeting is. Um, the other thing I'll do is I will circulate. Now that we've talked about it more about priorities and vision and stuff, I will circulate some small. Right shortish document just to share with the council and the TSO. So that could be an agenda for our next. Right. Well. And we can do it one of two ways. We can either do it where I circulate it and then um, we edit it and get it out. Or if we don't think it's that time sensitive, I don't think it's super time sensitive. Um, we could just, we could talk about it at the next meeting. So sure. Yep. Great. Um, and so um, any Sounds good. Any um, topics not reasonably anticipated? Yeah, I just have a quick question for Guilford. Is the Fort River taking out the cross uh, the sidewalk at um, on Belchertown Road? I saw a whole bunch of uh, cones there today. Like right, you know, before you get to Amherst Woods, the Hampshire. Oh. Right? I was wondering, is that related to ice? Um, they were actually out there videotaping today, so they were looking for what's going on, um, but there's not really taking out the sidewalk. It, it is some, there is some substance there then? Uh, they're just ch trying to check a few things out. Um, okay. We actually know what's going on. Uh -huh. I actually, um, Guilford, would you allow me to share my screen? Uh -huh. I have some pictures that I took on the road yeah. recently. Thank you. You're a panelist. You can... Do it anytime you want to. I can. Okay. <laughs> Share screen. Okay, great. Um, and I'm just going to show you my desktop because I just have them on my. Um, so on my, it's in my. I, I just um, sent myself some images. So I I really love riding my bikes and I love taking my kids around. And this is a view on Bay Road, of look at where the um the line is here. Do you all see that? Um. It is, I, I never understood until I like, I do this, I bike over here all the time. So this is Bay Road between Sweet, between the roundabout and um, Southeast Street. So it's right, you know, right there. Uh -huh. And um, do you see, I, I never understood why I didn't feel really safe right here. And then I looked at where the white line is. And do you see this? How, isn't that crazy? And it's not like, it's just debris, it's right there. and. Um, this is the next view. So that was just around the corner. And you can see you really can't be behind the white line there. And um, oh, this is just telling me it's like 181 is where that is. And, and, and um, so there really is, and, and what's interesting, I went a little further down towards Southeast Street. And, um, and this is what the sidewalk looks here. It's really not really rideable, although it's a little further, the white line is a little further away from the end of the road. But what I, what I was trying to show here, which I can't see, I was sitting right here on my bike, just right outside that white line. And I could see where the white line used to be, which is a little further away. It's more like up here. And, and, and people were beeping at me like crazy and, and while I was taking this picture. And you can see I'm right there, which I'm really right at the edge of the street. And um, I just, the, and, and you can't, what you can't see is where the white line used to be, which was somewhere over here somewhere way over here. And, um, and I was like, hey, what happened? You know, because anyway, this is super dangerous. And it's a really wide road, really wide. And I'm not sure why the um, white lines got painted that way, especially if you look at this one, you can see it kind of, you know, it bumped out a little bit because there was some something there, but you know, they're pliable. And I think the white line used to be more like right here or something, but somehow it shifted and 
people got really, people are really angry about that when I was sitting right outside that white line taking this picture. So I don't know, we should probably try and rectify. That. Yeah, it looks like a lot of just stuff that's got washed down the hill. Right? Yes, but you can see uh -huh. here, it's not- That's the edge, yeah. This yeah, is- Yeah, yeah, totally, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you could, oh, so you can create more of a shoulder if it's like painted differently. But now which street is that? That's Belchertown Road. Bay, Bay Road, Bay Road. Bay Road. Mm -hmm. Between um, like Sweet Alice, you know, the traffic circle there, you know, by Atkins and um, Southeast Street. That whole stretch is a little precarious. And I, I, I really feel like it's a really wide road. So there's definitely things we could do about that. That's all. Thank you. <laughs> so, Should I move to adjourn now? Yes. I second. All right. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you, Kim. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Gilford Bye. and Chris, for joining Happy us. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. All right. Bye. 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 Happy healthy New Year. Yeah, exactly. Yeah.